In the carefree time before George W. Bush, 9-11 and Iraq, Conor Oberst was just a blip on the pop music radar, adored by an elite circle of rock critics and college radio geeks. You make me happy, oh, and skies are gray. The world was a radically different place back then, and so was the music of Bright Eyes. It was a different time, you know? I mean, I can remember certain things and, you know, feelings, but I don't think I can get back there. Bright Eyes songs were bleak and beautiful, introspective tales of tortured adolescence. But in recent years, Connor's lyrics have turned outward, shifting from the personal to the political, taking aim at the war in Iraq and its architects. It's just so hard to understand over here the actual loss of human life, you know, being experienced there. I felt really extremely angry and frightened and crazy, you know, over a, a few years ago, and I think that's when I was writing the most overt songs. Well, I should stop pointing fingers, reserve my judgment of all those public action figures, the cowboy presidents, so loud behind the bullhorn, so proud they can't admit when they've made a mistake. One of Connor's most blatant anti-war jabs was When the President Talks to God, a scathing indictment of the man in the White House, which Bright Eyes famously performed in a 2005 appearance on The Tonight Show. When the President talks to God, do they drink near beer and go play golf while they pick which countries to invade? Which Muslim souls still can be saved? I guess God just calls a spade a spade when the president talks to God. The clip made it to YouTube, where it became a viral video rallying cry for those disillusioned with Bush. There's never been a protest movement that's really gotten any traction with this war in any way near what it was you know, 40 years ago with Vietnam. I mean, do you have any thoughts on that? I don't know. It's shocking. It's unfortunate that the people that did get elected in November don't realize that that's the whole, that's all that the American population wants, you know, mm -hmm. is the war to end. Exactly. That's like, that's it. Like as soon as, as soon as possible. I put my hands up, I say enough is enough. If you walk away, I'll walk away. And he shot me dead. I reached a point of just kind of overload where I just didn't want to think about it anymore. You know, is it also Which I guess it's sort of chicken shit, but. Well, but it's, you gotta be true to yourself and yeah. what you're feeling. You know? And what Connor has been feeling lately is a search for harmony within his own life and with the often scary world at large. It's that quest, along with a sense of spiritual cleansing, that informs Bright Eye's latest, Casadega. I guess the essence of the album is just sort of trying to um, make peace with everything and be uh, comfortable in your own skin and living in the moment as much as possible and trying not to uh, obsess over the past or the future too much. Which is not to say that Connor's afraid of social commentary or provocative lyrics. In fact, he dares to tread on some truly sacred ground in the album's first single. The Bible's blood and Torah's death to Koran's mute. If you burn them all together, you get close to the true still. For me, religion is, if it, if it enhances your life, which religion should do, you know, in its pure form, then I think it's great, but it's hard not to look historically and just not think that it's been like the worst thing that ever happened to mm -hmm. the human race. Mm -hmm. It really is. I mean, I can't, it's been the cause of almost every evil. When I do wrong, I am with God, she thought. Scary, I think the, you know, the rise of fundamentalism everywhere is really terrifying. Like, the, you know, the evangelical Christian movement in America is, I think, the thing that we as a democracy should fear the most. And so the one-time boy poet of Omaha, who first waxed emotional from the trenches of teenage wasteland, then went on a political tear, now appears to have reached a place of quiet resignation to the state of the world around him and to the uncertainty of what tomorrow may bring. Everything in my If you can keep a positive outlook, then inevitably 
it's you know it's gonna feel better and seem better around you. So that's what I've been. I don't know. That's the theory I've been working off of lately. When I feel lost, I am not at all.